This review will take a quick look at the um, uh, major rape trial that took place in Steubenville, Ohio. And that's, that uh, town is mostly known for having a good football team. But uh, it, uh, well, the crime that took place there was recorded with uh, today's technology, the handheld cell phones. And uh, the story went national. Let me get on the screen here real quick. One moment, please. Few had ever heard of Steubenville, Ohio before this, but now the country knows of this town, and tonight this case is still exploding. For the first time right here, you'll see tapes of police interviews that reveal what teenage witnesses saw and heard, some of whom did nothing. In fact, 16 of them still tonight refusing to cooperate with authorities. But if they're not talking, their cell phones are. In what might be a courtroom first, a case almost entirely pieced together by social media. During the crime, many did not step up to help, but nearly all got out their cell phones and started snapping pictures and tweeting. Over 400,000 pieces of evidence were examined in this case from just 13 cell phones. Teenagers living their lives through a cell phone and ruining any number of lives in the process. This week, a swift verdict in a trial that split a small town in middle America. Both of the defendants are guilty. Emotional apologies, too little, too late. I'm sorry to put you guys through this. That does not Tonight, new voices and new knowledge. The events of one night casting a white-hot spotlight on a crisis in America. This is not just a Steubenville problem. This is a nationwide problem. Sex crimes being recorded instead of reported. Think about all the bystanders. Steubenville typically makes headlines for touchdowns, not trials. A football frenzy town straight out of Friday Night Lights. We're going to play fast. We're going to take what we can get, gentlemen. Do you understand me? Let's show them what we got. Up until recently, Steubenville's claim to fame was being the birthplace of Dean Martin and former porn star Tracy Lords. In the middle of this once thriving, now struggling city of 18,000, nestled on the eastern border of Ohio, stands Harding Stadium, the crown jewel of this former steel town. What is it like in this town on game day? It's very... College or pro games. In his one and only television interview conducted before he was convicted of a heinous crime, Malik Richmond told me what it was like to pull on that big red jersey. Lots of kids in town grow up hoping, wishing one day they could play for big red football. Were you one of those kids? Yes, I was. And then there's Trent. His father, Brian, a football coach, says there's football in his son's DNA. One of his dreams since he was since he was a kid was to play quarterback for Stephen. It was a dream that for these boys was coming true. In the waning days of summer, last August 11th, Big Red has a scrimmage. Firestorm is about to engulf Malik, Trent, the team, and the entire town. After that scrimmage, a raucous post-game party ensues in an unsupervised house where apparently everyone's got a drink in one hand and a cell phone in the other. Was there a lot of celebrating among the football team? Yeah. We was really, like, discussing, like, we, we're, we're going to win the state championship. Joining in the revelry with Trent and Malik that night is a girl, 16 years old, an honor student and a soccer player from a high school across the river in West Virginia. She had her arm wrapped around me and one hand like on my chest and she was like, we were just talking. The night begins with harmless high school flirting, but over the next several hours there will be drinking, party hopping, and terrible crimes committed. The shocking charges? The girl was sexually assaulted after she got too drunk to consent, while onlookers take cell phone pictures and videos of it all. And Malik and Trent are the two boys accused. Ten days after that night, the boys are arrested, accused of not having intercourse, but with penetrating the girl with their fingers while she was substantially impaired. Little do they know, someone else is also about to conduct an investigation of her own. Two players were arrested for rape and 
At that point, I'm like, big red football players, this is big news in Steubenville. Alexandria Goddard, a crime blogger who used to live in Steubenville, is determined to expose what happened. She starts digging. What she would uncover, degrading tweets, graphic photographs, and one appalling YouTube video would turn a local story into a national scandal. She is so really great. <laughs> this is about to be on key. She is dead. Get on the phone and call the police. That's what you do when you know of a crime. You don't make a... No, you don't make a video of it and put it on YouTube where someone like me can find it. And that's some information about what happened. And they went to trial and uh, they, were, they were juveniles. But here's some, uh, here's some additional footage of the trial. Uh, one moment, please. And here's the, after they were found guilty. Uh, one moment, please. High school football team in Ohio have been convicted of raping a 16-year-old girl. Social media played a big role in the case. Terrell Brown is in Steubenville this morning. Terrell, good morning. Nor Anthony, good morning. Ten years ago, this may have been a case that was confined to just this small town in eastern Ohio. But when online activists got involved, it exploded into a national story. And the two teens at the center of it all learned their fate. After four days of often graphic testimony, Judge Thomas Lips announced a verdict. Both of the defendants are hereby adjudicated delinquent beyond a reasonable doubt. Both Trent Mays and Malik Richmond were found delinquent, the juvenile equivalent of guilty for the rape of a 16-year-old girl last August. The two Steubenville High football players and their families wept during the hearing. Mays said he was sorry. I would truly like to apologize. And Richmond addressed the girl's family across the courtroom. I had no intention to do anything like that. And I'm sorry to put you guys through this. But it's like... <laughs> During the trial, prosecutors reconstructed the night of partying through text messages and cell phone pictures, including this one posted on social media, showing Mays and Richmond carrying the teen by her wrists and ankles. Key for the prosecution was the victim's time. Oh, and move on. We need to say enough is enough. This has to stop. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine, whose office prosecuted the case, wants to know if more players were involved that night and may pursue further charges. Sixteen people have still refused to talk to authorities. This community needs assurance that no stone has been left unturned in our search for the truth. Richmond will serve at least one year, Mays will serve at least two, and how long they're ultimately held will depend on their progress in juvenile detention. Anthony Nora. And that's a quick review of that uh, controversial case, and uh, I don't know if there's a book about it, but there's a lot of stuff online, and um, I didn't get everything out. I tried to get the significant points. Let me get a final screen on here, and that'll do it. Uh, one moment, please.